Hello YouTube. Uh, today I've got something different from my normal content. I've just got a quick tip uh, for those of you who are into software like Ableton Live or the Native Instruments uh, software. I've come across a technical issue uh, with MIDI routing in Ableton and I uh, just uh, would like to put up a solution to that. So here we have Reactor and inside I've got two separate sequences and what I want to do is send these on different channels into contact. So I want the first sequence to go into the marimba on channel 1 and the second sequencer to go into the uh, channel 2 on the drum kit. So let's see what happens when we just use the MIDI routing um, as standard. So if we go into our connect tab, um, we want to send our first sequencer back to the plugin on channel 1 and the second sequencer back to the plugin on channel 2. And what I have here is another routing channel. So I'm taking the MIDI from Reactor and I'm sending that to Contact. So let's see what happens when we put that MIDI into it. So as you can hear, we're not getting any drum kit sound, we're only getting the marimba sound. So I'll just stop that for a minute. So what's the problem? Well, what's happening is that when we take the MIDI from Reactor, what Ableton is doing is it's merging all the channels uh, into one channel. So what's happening is that these notes are no longer separate. They're all going to channel 1 and being put into the marimba. Um, so what can we do about that? Well, if you've got the most recent um, version of Reactor, um, you should have open sound control. I'm not sure exactly which version uh, open sound control was put in, but if you have it, it should be quite obvious. Um, you'll see these OSC references in the connect tab. So what we can do is we can use this as a way to bypass Ableton's um, limitation. So how do we do that? Well, what we want to do is go into file and start with the OSC settings. So if you haven't got that activated, you want to turn that on. And what we want to do is go to OSC send set up a new connection let's call this one channel 2 and we want to send that to 127.0.0.1 now what that does is it sends sends um, the OSC messages to the loop back address so this is coming this will come back into the computer. So it's similar to internal MIDI routing. And select, we need to select a port, so make it something that'll make sense. So in this case, let's pick 10,002. So we know it's for channel two. Okay. Now we, what we'll want to do is we need a second reactor instance. And again, we, we need to set up our OSC settings and activate that. And this time, we want to set up our second reactor instance as a receiver. So we have to make sure that this port number here matches the send uh, port number on our first instance. Now once we've set up our OSC, what we need is some instrument that will pick up those OSC messages. So at the moment, let's see if we've got anything coming through. What we want to do, go back to our first one, and the, our first sequencer will send on back to Ableton on channel 1 anyway. So we can leave that as, as a standard MIDI output. For our second one, what we want to do is disable MIDI output back to the back to the um, the host. Instead, what we want to do is we want to go to OSC here, and we want to send the the the, the MIDI output from this 
through OSC. So you go to target and select channel two. So this is now sending OSC messages to channel two, um, which is the, the, the connection that I set up. So as you can see here, we've got um, lights coming on here for our OSC and here as well. So that's a good indication that it's working on that end. Now we want to go back to our receiver instance and here in the, in the top we can see um, we've got OSC activity coming into this instance of reactor. So that's good. So if we click on the router and we go to the side here, we want to select OSC source. And I've, I've already set up some connections previously, but um, the name will correspond to the name of the instrument in the first instance. So now we're receiving MIDI information from the second sequencer. And what I've done inside this instrument is set up a simple, um, it takes the MIDI input and then it sends it straight out to a, a pitch and gate module. So now this, this instrument here um, is able to send MIDI information back to the plugin. So if you haven't already got this set up, you just want to send it back to the plugin on channel one. It, it doesn't matter what channel you, you put it on because as I mentioned in the first instance, um, Ableton Live uh, merges it all back to channel one anyway. But now we have one in instance that's putting out one channel of messages and a second instance of Reactor putting out um, channel two messages. So again, we need another routing track. So we want to take the MIDI from that instance of reactor and we want to send that to contact on channel 2. So let's see what that sounds like. Okay good, that's our drum kit and I just need to activate the first one again. And so there you have it. We've now got one instance of reactor um, producing the notes and then with a bit of extra routing we're able to get around Ableton's uh, limitation with merging the MIDI um, channels. So this, normally what I would do if I had something like this, I would just put these on separate instances anyway. But uh, let me turn that off for a second. The reason I wanted to do this is, say for example, if I want to have um, interactions between these two instruments in the one instance of reactor, and then I, if I had to have two different channels on the one instance, this is a way of getting it back to Ableton and um, keeping the channel information separate. So hopefully this will be of use to you. I've, I've come across this problem on a few different forums and I haven't seen a solution to it. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video run through and uh, hope this is of use to you. Uh, thanks for listening.